Hi everyone, welcome back to Neurosci IQ. In today's video, we are diving into the fascinating topic of tratogens and their impacts on prenatal development. So on the agenda today, we will be covering some basic introductions to tratogens and what they are. Then we will move on to the basic principles of tratology. And lastly, we will be covering the different types of abnormalities and types of tratogens. Essentially, tratogens are factors that can cause developmental abnormalities or birth defects in a developing embryo or fetus. Specifically, there are three main types of abnormalities. First, we have malformations. Secondly, disruptions. And the third type is deformations. To give you guys just some hard numbers or statistics, major anomalies or abnormalities occur in approximately 5% of all live births. 15% of these major anomalies can be attributed to genetic defects. 10% can approximately be associated with environmental agents and 20% can be associated with both a combination of genetic and environmental agents. And lastly, 55% of all of these major anomalies have an unknown cause. So now let's move on to covering the four main principles of tratology. First, the effects of tratogens depends on the genetics of the mother and the fetus. Secondly, the risk of defects depends on the developmental stage of the fetus or the embryo. For example, in the diagram on the right, we can see that the most sensitive time in the embryonic development and the highest risk is actually the first trimester and the risk of birth defects decreases as time goes on or the gestation week increases. Thirdly, the severity of defects depends on both the dosage and the length of exposure to the tratogen. So for example, if, so, if the fetus is exposed multiple times to a tratogen, it is worse than being exposed once and this can determine the severity of the defect. Lastly, each tratogen has a, a specific mechanism of action that it causes the defect that is associated with the tratogen. So now let's move on to covering the three main types of abnormalities that we briefly discussed in the introduction. First, let's focus on malformations. Malformations typically occur during the formation of structures such as organs, and they are most common during the third to eight weeks of embryonic development. Furthermore, malformations have been associated with either a complete or partial absence of the structure, and this highlights an intrinsic problem within the developing tissue. Neural tube defects are a common example of malformations. The second type of abnormality that we will cover in this video are deformations. Deformations typically occur later in the gestation and are caused by extrinsic factors rather than intrinsic causes. Deformations are most common in the second and third trimesters of pregnancies and deformations are associated with deficiency in the amniotic fluid and what this means is that there isn't enough amniotic fluid protecting the embryo. They can also be caused by stress from mechanical forces over long periods of time. An example of deformations would be neuromuscular disorders. The last type of abnormality that we will cover in this video are called disruptions. Disruptions are a result of destructive forces acting on already formed structures or organs.
Essentially, disruptions lead to the loss of this structure or cause abnormal differentiation or damage. Vascular accidents and amniotic bands have been hypothesized to be involved in disruptions. For example, we can see from the diagram that when the amniotic fluid is damaged, there are like thin bands formed and these bands can wrap around the developing embryo or fetus and it can, for example, damage the structure or restrict blood flow. A common example of disruptions can include facial clefts. So now let's move on to talking about the different types of teratogens. In particular, first we can focus on chemical agents. There are many different chemicals that have been linked to birth defects. For example, lithium, valproic acid, lead, mercury, just to name a few. It is very difficult for scientists to establish the effects of different chemicals because of two main reasons. First, most studies are retrospective studies and are dependent on the mother's memory. Secondly, pregnant women take many different drugs and it is very hard for scientists to determine, for example, which chemical was causing the abnormality. Thalidomide exposure is a very notable and infamous example of birth defects being caused by a medication that happened in the 1950s and 1960s. Alcohol is a very famous teratogen and a chemical agent and has been known to cause severe defects in the central nervous system. In particular, alcohol effects on the embryo depend on the dose, exposure frequency, as well as the developmental stage of the embryo. In general, alcohol has been shown to cause brain development de delays and structural defects in the embryo. One of the main ways that alcohol does this is that it unfortunately constricts blood flow to the embryo and this leads to hypoxia, uh, reduced amounts of oxygen, and also lack of nutrition. Secondly, alcohol also leads to the generation of toxic or reactive oxygen species, and this leads to neuronal cell death in the cortex. This also impairs cell division and growth, which could potentially explain some of the things that we see in babies that have been exposed to alcohol. Lastly, alcohol also has been shown to reduce the number of glial cells in the nervous system, and this impairs the ability of neurons to migrate in the central nervous system. And another thing just to keep in mind is that the fetus or the embryo cannot process alcohol as efficiently as an adult. So the alcohol actually stays in the fetus for a much longer time compared to an adult. Now we can move on to discussing infectious agents. Infectious agents include viruses and viruses are capable of directly infecting nerve tissues and interfere with the development of the nervous system. For example, the Zika virus has been shown to cause microcephaly. And on the diagram on the right, we can see a diagram of a baby with microcephaly. Secondly, there is also fever associated with a viral infection in the mother, and this causes hyperthermia and hyperthermia has been shown to induce neur neural tube defects and other defects of the central nervous system. Thirdly, some viruses have also shown not to high be super teratogenic, but can be passed on to the baby during the delivery. And these viruses include, for example, HIV. Lastly, vaccination has played a significant role in reducing the rate of birth defects. And for example, 90% of pregnant women have antibodies against the rubella virus, 
and this has really reduced the amount of birth defects caused by infectious agents such as the rubella virus. The last type of trotogen that we will cover in this video are physical agents such as radiation. Ionizing radiation is a very potent trotogen and its effects depend on the dosage and the developmental stage of the embryo. For example, the effects have been shown to include seizures and epilepsy, but also structural defects such as neural tube defects. Furthermore, radiation has been shown to impair the function of the central nervous system of the fetus by causing mutations, neuronal cell death, especially in the cortex, and abnormal cell migration and cell division. Lastly, it is important to note that, for example, 78% of the pregnant survivors of the atomic bombs during World War II either aborted or had kids with severe defects in their central nervous system, and this really highlights the impacts of radiation. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Neurosci IQ. If you enjoyed watching this video, please make sure to subscribe for more similar content.